All right guys, so let's talk 2021 model year Street Glide and Street Glide Special. So the Street Glide Special has always been a bike that's been near and dear to me, as many of you know that have been following me on the channel for a while. So I'm actually on my second Street Glide Special right now. I bought a 2014 when the Special first came out and then I bought a 2018 Street Glide Special so that I could get the Milwaukee 8 when you know it first came out. Actually the Milwaukee 8 came out in the 17 model year so it was the second year that it came out. So really there's no bike that I've ridden more in the Harley Davidson lineup than the Street Glide. And so I'm just kind of a huge Street Glide fan and they've had a lot of cool changes over the years and the bikes evolved into something that's really awesome. And really, if you go back to the, the Street Glide's heritage and where it came from, it really is a result of a lot of people customizing their Electro Glide standards and their Electro Glide classics, taking the tour pack off and making it kind of a custom bagger, lowering it, throwing wheels on it, putting the sounds in there, you know, stereo system and everything. And so Harley Davidson factory, they recognize that. They built a Street Glide in the 2006 model year and we've kind of pioneered or revolutionized the bagger world and the, and the bagger scene from there. So the Street Glide was definitely one of those bikes at the forefront of the whole modern bagger era that we've come to know now. And so for that reason, there's just a lot of cool things in the history of the bike that I really like the, the Street Glide personally. Let's talk a little bit about what the Street Glide offers and what the Street Glide Special offers this model year that's a little bit different. So the Street Glide Special was reserved for the virtual launch that happened on January 19th when Harley Davidson unveiled some of their newer products for this model year. And some of the things that they, they changed this year are you have a new sleek center console now. So the center console is kind of reminiscent of what the CVO styling is. It's a real cool custom minimalist look. Real simple uh, center console there uh, above the tank and you got the gas filler off to the right that I think is a cool uh, redesign, a little bit more modernized, makes the bike a little bit more special. You've also got the, the different wheels as well in the special. So you've got a Prodigy wheel, uh, which was a new wheel last year. It's a 19 inch in the front and a 18 inch in the rear. The Prodigy wheel is a cool style as well. On the Street Glide standard, you have the Enforcer wheels. You have 19 in the front and you have an 18 in the rear as well. The Enforcer wheel we first saw back in the 14 model year when they first introduced the Street Glide Special. For a long time, starting in the 2006 model year when the Street Glide was very first introduced, all the way to the 13 model year, you just had a regular Street Glide. And then in the 14 model year, they introduced the Special. And the Special had stretch bags and it had the bigger infotainment system. And things have kind of evolved over the years. You know, in the 18 model year, we saw the specials get all blacked out uh, for the first time and the standards were still in the chrome trim. And then that kind of leads me to my next point. The Street Glide Special this year, you have the option of getting both a blacked out trim or a chrome trim. It's about a $900 bump in the price if you want the blacked out trim. And what that is, basically your forks, your rocker box covers, your air cleaner cover, your transmission cover, primary cover, all that stuff is all blacked out. Um, and so you have kind of that cool black powder coat right look right from the factory, which is nice. Another significant thing they did this model year as well is they went to an LED and Daymaker headlamp on there, which I think a lot of people would argue that's a long overdue thing, especially for a bike where there's two models and one of them is you know, designated as special or a higher end, more premium motorcycle. You got to put the LED Daymaker on there. So long overdue, Harley Davidson finally did it, thank goodness. In the past, you know, when I'm talking about the Road Glide and the Street Glide, I'm always telling people the Road Glide has far superior lighting. Well, now it's a little bit closer. I think the Road Glide still has it by a little bit, but at least the Street Glide, you've got that projector LED Daymaker on there, which also looks really nice as well, as opposed to the dual halogen lights on the Street Glide standard. So the badging is also a little bit different this year. They went to kind of this simple, bar and shield look on there real clean. On the Street Glide standard, you've got badging that's a little bit, it looks a little bit more like they have in the past couple years. We've got this elongated rectangular badge as well, which I think looks really good as well. One isn't necessarily better than the other. Of course, the Street Glide Special, you get the 114 on it. And on the Street Glide standard, you get the 107 Milwaukee 8 which is probably the biggest, most significant difference of the two. The Street Glide Special, you have a chopped engine guard on there now, which is a little bit of a, a change there. The standard, you have the full engine guard, which looks a little bit more classic, less custom looking. The Street Glide Special also has a ventilator air cleaner on there now, which is something that we saw on the CVOs in the past. And so you got more of that exposed element, uh, kind of an oval shape air cleaner on there. Again, one more thing that makes it look a little bit more custom. And on the Street Glide standard, you have kind of that, that football looking 
uh, air cleaner cover on there still. On the Street Glide Special, you have a glossy interfering, so gloss black interfering. On the standard, you still have that dull black, kind of a minor cosmetic thing. And on the Street Glide Special, you have stretched bags as opposed to the shallow bags on the standard. Although it's, it's kind of interesting, I actually have a lot of customers now that are doing like the performance bagger uh, look on their bike where they want the extra lean angle. And so they actually prefer the short bags to the, the stretch bags. So, and it's kind of interesting when I looked at the CVO Road Glides this year, one of the three CVO Road Glides, I think that they call it the black hole paint scheme, has the short bags on there. And I don't know if they did that to, I guess, cater maybe to the performance bagger guy. I'm not sure why that is, but I think that, that might be the reason why. Anyways, that, that's about the only differences between the, the Special and the Standard. This year is very interesting because they allow you to get the Street Glide Special in both the black trim or the chrome trim. So let's talk about that for a second. I personally felt like getting the Standard if you wanted the chrome and the blacked out trim, get the Special if you want the blacked out trim. I thought that was enough. Apparently Harley Davidson, I think they got pressure from maybe riders that they wanted to get the 114 in chrome, and so they created a chrome version of the Street Glide Special. That's my only, I guess, thought or justification for them now introducing both finishes on a Special. In my opinion, I don't think that, that you needed that, that much of a differentiation. I don't think you needed that choice there. Most of the people that buy Specials here just go with the black. And so I thought that was kind of a cool feature that you could get when you went to the Special. So I didn't think that was necessary to bring the chrome back, but they did, and so, that is an option now. You know, I think one of the most common questions we got last year and probably the year prior um, was what's the difference between the Street Glide Special and the Street Glide Standard? And I'm sure Matt's gonna go into the nitty gritty of it. I think this year, more than ever, we're gonna see people going for the Special over the Standard. Um, you know, we already saw that at our dealership, you know, despite everyone always crying about how expensive Harleys are. Uh, Matt and I are always talking about how our best selling bikes are two of our most expensive models. Um, and within the Softail family, the same is true. The, the least expensive bike is not the best selling bike, far from it. Um, and so what we've always talked about is kind of the value that is added uh, with certain options. Um, and I think that this year, the Street Glide Special became an even more compelling offer relative to the standard. I'd say like nine times out of 10 when we sold a Street Glide Standard last year, it was because someone really just did not like blacked out finishes. Um, and now that being an option on the bike, and really the way I see it is that blacked out finishes are now an option as opposed to the standard. And what I mean by that is you're, you, know, you, you could consider it a $900 upcharge or a $900 discount for the Chrome, whichever way you look at it, right? Uh, you're now given basically a lower price point on the Street Glide Special if you're interested in Chrome. And I think that's cool. One, because it lowers the price. And two, because there was a lot of other things on the special that you might have wanted other than the blacked out finishes. Like you might have wanted this, the, the Chrome finishes, but you wanted the stretch bags, right? And you wanted the gloss interfering. Um, like I think that's just a huge upgrade in my mind, the gloss interfering. You know, it, it doesn't get talked about because I mean, on a spec sheet, what does that mean? You know, no one, no one really cares, but it makes the bike look so much more premium and it makes it so much more premium visually in a way that's probably the most important, right? Like the stretch bags everyone else sees or you see when you're off the bike, but you're gonna be spending thousands of miles staring at the inner fairing and I think it makes a huge difference to have it painted. And so if you chose the standard just because it had chrome, um, but you wanted all the other things that the special had, that it put you in a weird position where you were paying out of pocket to either chrome the bike, which was insane, or you were paying out of pocket to add stretch bags and add the gloss interfering and a number of other things that the special comes for. And so, I'm, I mean, I don't know if Harley is gonna be phasing out the standard or what's gonna happen, but like I said, like nine out of 10 guys that chose the standard chose the standard because it was Chrome. Um, and now that they can get the special and in Chrome for a little less money than they could get the special before, um, I think, I mean, I just don't really envision us selling very many standards and not because it's a bad bike, but because for the extra, you know, three grand when you factor in the fact that the, the standard radio on here is the new Boombox GTS 6.5 inch, um, which pretty much everyone gets anyways. Uh, when you consider that price differential, you know, shrinks with that option on the standard, 
you know, suddenly I'd say the stretch bags, the gloss interfering, the upgraded speakers, the new tank design that I think looks nicer, the wheel design on this, which I prefer, um, which, you know, I guess is, you know, preference, but like I said, those big things. And then, of course, you can't discount the bigger motor, which on the baggers, I think is a big deal. That extra torque of the 114 is nice. I mean, suddenly you're like, okay, well, 60 bucks a month to get all that? Like, I, I, I feel almost like I, it's crazy not to do it. The RDRS is back. That was a brand new system we saw last year in the 20 model year. The RDRS is a reflex defensive rider system. Um, and I think this is something that gets overlooked quite often. And it's actually a really significant upgrade on these bikes that is kind of a huge deal that a lot of people just, I, I think, maybe underappreciate. But the RDRS, basically what that does is, it's, it's several things. So what it does is, is there's a six axis IMU inertia measurement unit in the bike. And what that does is it, measures uh, your lean angle basically if you're going into a turn and what that does is it tailors the ABS it gives you traction control which is also lean angle enhanced traction control it's also got what they call drag torque slip control and basically what that is, is if the bike is decelerating too quickly it will actually add a little bit of torque to the rear wheel so that the bike maintains traction so if you hit the throttle too hard you got traction control and then if you hit it not hard enough or you if you downshift maybe and let the clutch out and your wheels aren't spinning fast enough you got drag torque slip control you've also got turn enhanced abs braking as well on here and you've also got the hill hold mode if you're on a hill you squeeze the front brake it pulsates and you, the bike won't roll backwards on you you throw it into first and you have a really smooth takeoff that also gives you the tire pressure monitoring system on on there as well so you can see electronic on your dash what your tire pressure is and so you can kind of monitor that instead of having to get down there with the gauge every time so the RDRS is a package of all of those things it's an option on both of these bikes it's a $995 option if you want that I order pretty much all my specials with that option on there and the standards I kind of do 50 50 that's just kind of what I'm ordering at the dealership based on what I'm finding uh, customer preferences are my thing is, and what I found with most people, is if you're gonna pony up the $27,000, $28,000 for a special, what's another $995 to get all those things, the tire pressure, the traction control system, the vehicle hold mode, all that stuff. And so if I were getting a bike today, I would definitely get one with the RDRS. I think it's well worth the money. So a topic that I usually always visit just because the street glide is shopped against the road glide very frequently. A lot of times guys get the bike just based on the look of the bike, which do they like better? and as shallow as this may sound, I think that's actually a good way to go about it. Get the one you like the look of. There are some other things if you really want to get into it and get technical about it. Uh, but really the Road Glide and the Street Glide, they ride very, very similar. They're both going to do great in the wind. That's another really huge myth is a lot of people think that the Road Glide is just going to cut the wind and split the wind a lot better. And um, I think there's only about a 10% truth there. Um, if you guys watch my past videos, I'm kind of repeating myself because I, I touch on this topic a lot. but. Um, I would sit on both. I would ride both. The feeling of the bars and the leverage is a little bit different. On the street glide, you've got a little bit more of a front to back leverage on the bars, whereas the road glide, you've got a little bit more tiller style, style where it's a top down steering. And really, you're going to get used to whatever one you ride the most, and they're both going to be able to handle and perform very similarly uh, once you kind of get used to the, the leverage of them both. They do fit a little bit differently as far as the handlebar ergonomics. Your seat to your feet part of the rider triangle is virtually the same on both bikes, but the handlebars, a lot of guys have a preference one way or another. 
And ultimately, a lot of people end up changing their bars anyways, so that may be kind of an insignificant point for you. There's a little bit more storage in the Road Glide as well. You have a storage cubby hole on the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side, you have a little bit more storage on the Road Glide as well. So if you like your glove box style storage, the Road Glide is kind of a, a clear leader there. I used to always give the lighting to the Road Glide in the past because you've had the LED uh, Daymaker, reflective Daymakers since the 2015 model year when the Road Glide was reintroduced. Now that you've got the LED Daymaker on the Street Glide Special, it's pretty dang close. This is the projector Daymaker. Both LED, the projector Daymaker is a little bit more of a concentrated beam than the reflector on the Road Glide. I'd have to do a test to really find out which I, I preferred. I think the Road Glide probably still lights up the road a little bit better because you've got du dual lights on the Road Glide. Of course, you can always add the passing lamps, the auxiliary lamps to the Street Glide Special. And once you do that, you definitely have more light on the Street Glide than you do on the Road Glide stock which is actually what I've done to my personal bike. And it's what you see on the Limiteds. So Matt and I got back a little while ago from taking out uh, some of the uh, street glides. We took out the standard and the special. I was riding around on the, the standard. And um, it's actually been a little while since I've taken a bagger out on the highway. And uh, so it was actually nice. Um, I've forgotten how nice they are just to cruise on the freeway. <clears throat> so when we got back from the ride, um, I was just I couldn't help but think how much of a nicer bike it would have been for me to have been on uh, for the trip to Zion that, that uh, we took. Well, it seems like a lifetime ago at this point. You know, the, the bagger just, the level of comfort that you get from uh, that, that chassis and that's, I'm talking about even stock suspension, which is not particularly well suited to a 150 pound rider. You know, it's, it's, it's pretty incredible how comfortable that bike is. You've got awesome wind protection. Um, you've got the saddlebags, so you're not, you know, riding around with a, uh, with a backpack. You've got cruise control, so you can adjust your hands, you know, rest them for a second. Uh, you know, you don't, you're not worried about, you know, monitoring or maintaining your seat speed. Even just fatigue, you know, from your wrist over the course of a, of a long trip starts to, you know, any little thing that's a pressure point, uh, you know, literally or figuratively on a longer trip, uh, it just starts to bug you and starts to drain you, starts to fatigue you. So, you know, the, the bagger compared to the slim that I took out to Zion and even compared to my old low rider with the race tech suspension and, and all done up perfectly for me, you know, hopping on a, a street glide with the suspension that, you know, is not set up for a 150 pound rider, as I mentioned, is, is a world difference. Uh, if, if you're like Nick, side by side, what would you rather take to Zion tomorrow night? Uh, your low rider uh, or the street glide, the street glide every time, bone stock street glide. I, I wouldn't mind pounding, you know, a thousand miles on that, or at least it, it feels like I could do it. So when it comes to, you know, deciding between the soft tail and uh, a street glide, or really this goes for pretty much any bagger, I think you got to be honest with yourself. How often are you going to be taking overnight trips? Because they, you know, they're just better than the soft tails are for that kind of riding. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know what I could have done to my slim because I had cruise control on it. I had a windshield. I had a big luggage rack, so I wasn't wearing a backpack. And even then, uh, I would have, I, I would have traded it instantly for a, a bagger. Um, and it's not because of the navigation, it's not because of the sound system. Those things are nice. There's just something about the ergonomics of that chassis, the size of the chassis, the quality of the wind deflection that you get from the fairing, that I think you just can't really perfectly repl replicate on, the back, uh, on a soft tail. I mean, you can get closer, and the windshield I was talking about, and the cruise control, and the luggage rack, I mean, they, they improved it. Like, they made the soft tail perfectly passable for taking out design, and I wasn't complaining. But it just was one of those things we hopped on the freeway and I instantly knew, oh yeah, this, this would have been better for the trip to Zion. Like it, it took five seconds on the 10 freeway to know that that was, it would have been a better bike for that ride. Um, but that's what I'm saying. You really need to be honestly saying how many times a year am I gonna be taking a trip like that versus what are my other rides look like? For me, commuting up and down the 605, 20 miles each way, half the time, at least prior to COVID in traffic, you know, bumper to bumper, almost the entire way. I don't want to be splitting lanes on a bike with bags and a big fairing on it. Um, so, you know, 95% of my riding on my Harley is that kind of commuting and 5% is overnight trips. So I'm not going to choose a bike that is advantageous for those 5% of rides um, when 95% of my rides are going to be better suited on another bike. 
And uh, you know, Matt and I always talk about this kind of thing, but you really need to be honest with yourself about what kind of riding you're gonna be doing and what the really key features are that you need uh, for that. So if you're the kind of guy who's you know, kind of going between, well, should I go with a bagger or should I go with a, uh, uh, you know, a soft tail, you know, or should I go with a street glide or should I go with a low rider S, you know, ask yourself, how often am I gonna be doing overnight trips? How often are my rides gonna be 150 miles or more uh, and it's gonna be mostly highway? Because if the answer is, you know, that a substantial percentage of your rides are gonna lean that kind of riding, you know, long distance, open highway stuff, the bagger is, in my mind, uh, it's a no-brainer. It's, it's a box you just instantly check. Whether that means you're going with an electric glide standard or a road king because you want to hit kind of that price point of sub 20, or whether it's you know a street glide special because you want all the bells and whistles um, and you want the extra style that comes with it, um, you can't really go wrong if you're doing lots of highway riding. So as I was watching Matt ride down uh, the freeway next to me and I was on the street glide and he was on the street glide special, uh, I couldn't help but you know be jealous of the aesthetic of that bike. Um, even little changes that I didn't, you know, I mean I saw, I read it in the description and I saw the photos of it uh, online, like the tank for example and the new center gauge uh, console. I didn't realize how big of an aesthetic difference it was until I saw it in person and I started looking at the bike from certain angles because um, really, the, the current setup on here uh, is, on, on the Street Glide Special, that is the, the new tank design, it really keeps the, the tank profile much lower and I think it maintains a much nicer body line over the, the entire profile of the bike. And uh, it's just, I really, really like it. I've been photographing it uh, over and over again on the Road Glide Special and now on the Street Glide Special as well and it's something that's really started to grow on me. I think I would pretty much instantaneously uh, put a flush mount gas cap on it. I think also we could just have the service department install them on every single special that's on the floor and probably no one would complain about the extra 70 bucks or whatever it is because it really looks like it's screaming for that in my mind. Long story short, uh, I, I personally think that the special became the much more compelling offer. Um, and I thought before the standard seemed pretty compelling because you got more stuff on the special but now it's almost like especially considering that the chrome is there and the chrome's even cheaper than the the blacked out special i mean why would you even why would you even get the standard it sounds like i don't like the bike the bike's amazing um but i just you know unless you really don't like more power and better looks uh i don't i you know i would just pony up Today I'm going to tell you a couple things why I prefer the Street Glide to the Road Glide personally. I like the Street Glide fairing that it's a little bit closer to you than the Road Glide. Um, and by the way, I'm not dissing the Road Glide at all. I love that too. I, it may be my next bike, I don't know. But the Road Glide, is, the fairing is situated a little bit further in front of you. You have a little bit more of the, the material and the fairing is just larger and it has more of a wraparound effect. And so I like the smaller footprint of the Street Glide Batwing fairing as well. I feel like it's a little bit more minimalist and even though one's not really lighter or, or better handling you know as far as the agility of the bike i still I kind of feel like the street glide you have you know less surface area and, and less you know fairing up there to to maneuver around with but again that's just kind of a mental thing it's not really a physical thing that is going to make any difference in, in how the bike performs i do think that the road glide fairing when it was reintroduced in the 15 model year uh, is, is a little bit more in touch with what people want. I feel like the style of the Road Glide fairing has really gotten more and more popular as well. A lot of the guys, especially like the millennial generation that is buying baggers now, prefer the Road Glide. Uh, we still sell a fair amount of the Street Glides, but the Road Glide fairing is just a lot more of the, the performance bagger scene or the performance inspired scene that we're seeing come in now. A lot of those guys prefer the Road Glide now. And so it's kind of interesting how you see, you know, trends kind of change. If we were to go back, you know, about 10 years ago, we sold probably five Street Glides for every one Road Glide. And now we're selling probably four or five Road Glides for every one Street Glide. Uh, or maybe not that much, maybe three Road Glides for every one Street Glide. But Def, the scales have definitely been tipped in favor of the Road Glide as far as rider preferences and what we're seeing people buy more of. Now let's talk a little bit about you know how you can kind of determine whether or not this bike is for you or not. So I always tell people you should, if you can touch on a Street Glide or really a bagger, a touring bike, if you can touch and you do a lot of freeway riding and you feel comfortable with the weight, 
almost every time you're gonna be happier on a touring bike, like a street glide or a road glide. Now, if you wanna take it to the next step and you do a lot of overnighters, especially with a passenger and you really want that storage space, then get the Limited. But if you want a bike that has that kind of custom look, custom bagger look from the factory, a little bit more of a sleek look to it, a little bit more of a minimalist look, dropped a little bit in the rear, then the Street Glide is a great option for you. Um, and I would fit the Road Glide in that category as well. So if you determine you want that category, that sleek custom bagger look, then you gotta kind of ask yourself, okay, which of these two do I like better, the Road Glide or the Street Glide? A lot of guys that are on the freeway a lot, especially in Southern California, we're on the freeway a ton. If you're, hand, if you're comfortable handling the weight, you're a, a mid-range, maybe an intermediate to advanced rider, and you plan on riding with a passenger you know, quite often, then one of these bikes is a really, really good bike to get. You really won't be disappointed. Very rarely do I see people trading in their street glide for something smaller like in the soft tail world. It does happen, and usually it's just because guys really just want a bike that's lighter, that they can ride harder, Maybe they hit the canyons hard, or maybe they just like that style better. Maybe they don't want the big you know, fairing on there and that full dresser look, which I totally can get as well. So a lot of guys will go there you know, for a style preference, but usually the guys that really like to get out there and lay down serious mileage. You know, when I say serious mileage, I'm, I'm really not talking about a huge amount of miles, you know, maybe two or 300 miles in a day then you're gonna more than likely be the happiest on a street glide or road glide. So my final thoughts, you know, it's, it is really interesting to see now that you've got the street glide standard, you've got a street glide special and you can get that both in the black finishes and the chrome finishes. There's a lot of choices out there for the street glide and I think Harley Davidson does that because they sell a lot of street glides. Street glides have been one of the best selling motorcycles for a long time now. You wanna give people as many options as possible within that, that singular model. Let me know in the comments below, guys, if you are interested in getting a Street Glide Special in the Chrome. Pretty much all my specials, Road Glide Specials and Street Glide Specials, I'm ordering exclusively with the black trim just because I feel like most people want it in the black trim. And I feel like the guys that wanted the Chrome trim just got the Street Glide or Road Glide standard and they were okay with that without getting the, the other you know, special treatment features that the specials come with, like the extended bags and the now the LED light and the, the center console and, and the big motor. And I think that's really the, the main thing is so many guys wanted the chrome with the 114 motor and they couldn't get it. Um, and I think that's probably the main motivator behind why Harley Davidson offered the specials with a chrome engine this year. All in all, the Street Glides, the standard and the special, they remain my favorite platform. I love the Street Glides. I've been riding the Street Glide now for six years. And so it's just a solid, good all around bike. I think the other thing that people sometimes worry about is, hey, if I get a touring bike, am I, is it gonna be too heavy and cumbersome around town and everything? And very rarely have I had anybody complain about that or feel like it was just too big to maybe get out of the garage or to get around town things like that. I'm sure there's maybe a small percentage of people that maybe stretch to get into the touring bike that maybe feel like that, that maybe should go to the, the soft tail anyways. But most people, if you're on the fence and you check off all the boxes that I'm mentioning with your touring and your body size and how much you ride with a passenger and, and if you do overnighters, if you check off all those boxes, then 99 times out of 100, the touring bike is gonna be best for you. I like the changes that Harley Davidson's done this year and I think the Street Glide just continues to have its place solidified within the Harley Davidson lineup as still fair Fairly new in my opinion you know it's only about 14 molly years old now which may seem like a long time for some people but if you talk about Harley Davidson's history that's just a small snippet of the you know 115 plus years Harley Davidson's been around so the street glide has definitely solidified its place in the lineup and it continues to do that here in the 21 model year. Yeah.